we might have some listeners that can relate that, you know, we're people pleasers because we want to be told good job all the time when we're not doing it for ourselves, for our intrinsic values, for our self-worth. So let's start from a young age of just being able to observe what they're doing and not necessarily having to tell them how wonderful they are because they already know they're wonderful. I appreciate what you said about skills. Children are developing various skills and having too many things on the shelf might create chaotic environment, internal chaos for them. And then and then imagine, you know, if there's there's so many toys that they take out them all off the shelf and they're all over the floor and then it's like, oh, let's clean up. It's like, no, like it's way too much, right? And that's that's for the adult and the child. So again, you're doing yourself a service by limiting the amount of toys and gadgets that you bring into your home, your 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 environment, like the the simplicity and the order of the environment really affects our psyche. Uh, at least I know for me, you know, when when there's a mess in the house, I'm not a happy camper. And, uh, and, and so imagine a tiny human who just gets overwhelmed with so much around. Yes, I think taking that time for us to first show this young one that, hey, this is a new toy. Let's explore it together. This is how we're going to work with it. This is where it gets returned when we're done. And um, I, I appreciate that idea. One thing at a time, put it away, get another one so that all the parts aren't you know mixed together. And now we're sorting and having tantrums at the end because it's overwhelming. Yeah. Yep. I enjoyed hearing about experiences. So when we have true, genuine experiences with our children, um, even as grandparents saying, let me take you to the zoo. So as we carry the child or we walk the child, the experiences are different. So what are some of the experiences just from going to the zoo and walking or being really low to the ground, what children acquire? What are some of the skills that we're showing? Because sometimes we don't think about all the children are absorbing and how they learn. Well, first of all, I mean, they're they're just experiencing with all of their senses, right? Because a, a, a young child is a sensorial learner. So, you know, when you say the zoo, what came to me was was odors, right? When different odors, when you're when you're near different animals, or if you get to go to you know the children's zoo area, you're going to feel the different coats of the animal. You're going to learn language because you're going to see for yourself what an elephant looks like and how huge it is, and so forth. So you're going to be able to make sense of, of the concrete world. Remember, I talked about reality base. So here we're, we're giving them those sensorial experiences to make sense of the, the physical world. And, and that to me is the beauty. So when you go to the zoo or to the park or anywhere with a child, please, please, please slow down and go at their pace. See what they see and experience it with them because they might just stand there and just look in at all at this huge elephant, for example, right? And just need to just soak it in and take it in. So just be, you know, be there with them, like be in the present moment, just like they are. There are great little teachers of, of slowing down and being in the present moment. And also, I will say that when you, you know, go someplace like that, and they might not be the least bit interested. And that's okay. Because <laughs> they're in the present moment. Maybe there's a dandelion that is coming through the cracks of the sidewalk, and that's what's fascinating to them. So that's it. Give them the language of what that is, and and so forth. Like it's just this this real 
understanding for me, like what is to be a prepared adult is to be able to be in the present moment with the children. So, yes, I remember walking to the zoo with my children and remembering the tiniest thing they can spot or things that I take for granted or from high up, I don't notice that they would stop and take a moment and what is this flower called, Mama? This, you know, what is this one right. called? And shapes of the leaves and variety of things. So that experience is not just a walk, but it's that bonding time, the language time that you spoke about, sensory experience of just soaking it all in and that self-construction of a human being. It's priceless. And I also enjoyed your conversation about bonding with the child mm -hmm. when you're feeding those are special moments now mine are 27 and 29 and just kind of looking back at that moments where did they begin were in those early years where just the scent the touch the being able to have a conversation the sense of safety mm -hmm. and all those just kind of flooded back to my mind as you were having this amazing conversation and um my last question or my curiosity here is about eccentric motivation because often our children are doing a lot of different things and the go-to response can be sometimes a praise like, yay! Great question because I think it's, you know, it's part, it's kind of ingrained in us that we want to be the cheerleader of our children and yes. and so forth. But here, I would really, you know, encourage parents and, and grandparents of young children or, or, you know, any adult that is around young children is that they're not doing it for us. They're doing it for themselves. So let them enjoy that moment for themselves, uh, that that is how they're going to develop that uh, kind of that intrinsic need and also just the the this the the confidence and and the self-worth because they're able to do things for themselves so one thing um we we say you know especially the first three years is that they we stand on two psychological legs the first one is trust in the world and that is as an infant we are our needs are being answered you know we cry because we're hungry because we're cold and such somebody is going to come to our rescue and help us and so forth so we have a trust in the world we we know that this is a safe place uh i am safe i can thrive i'm going to 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 thrive and expand and so forth and then comes trust in ourselves. And that comes from being left alone so that we can figure things out on our own, right? That the famous sentence of Montessori is, help me to do it by myself. So be there, help, uh, create an environment, prepare that environment for them, but let them go through the struggles of, you know, making the mistakes of retrying, of getting frustrated. And I'm not saying like never help a child and never step in, but give them time to figure things out on their own. And instead of, you know, saying good job, just like, oh, good job, just kind of it, it ends up being kind of like this broken record that that has no true meaning. Think about what you can encourage, like praise the effort, praise the process, like, oh my gosh, peeling those potatoes look really hard and you were able to use that peeler. That's pretty cool. That's it, right? It's about noticing what they're doing and just letting them know, like you see it and you see that they're making the effort, right? As opposed to Overpraising, which, you know, I think especially I feel in the United States, we have a tendency to, you know, want to give trophies to everybody, <laughs> whether they're, you know, whether they, they've won or not. And it's like, you, you know, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but let's even like maybe get rid of those trophies and just say, wow, that was, that was intense. That was a great effort on everybody's part. And, and, 
and and you know and voila and not have to always uh overpraise for me and and overpraising to me is also what what the the danger of it is that we're teaching children that they're doing things for external um rewards for external gratification they're not doing it for themselves and you know, oftentimes, and, and, you know, we might have some listeners that can relate that, you know, we're people pleasers because we want to be told good job all the time when we're not doing it for ourselves, for our intrinsic values, for our self-worth. So let's start from a young age of just being able to observe what they're doing and not necessarily having to tell them how wonderful they are because they already know they're wonderful. Yes, absolutely. And interestingly enough, when we keep giving the trophies or gifts, I they mean nothing. We notice that they're under the bed or just thrown around. But that valuable piece that you spoke about, that connection to acknowledge the effort really goes deep. It makes you feel so valued. And I can recall that as a child just remembering the moments where someone really believed in me. Right. And 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 for me it's like it's setting up also kind of expectations because then it's it's you know I will only do things if I get something for it. And well that's that's not really an uh you know a very healthy way of of setting them up for for the rest of their lives. Yes, indeed. This was an amazing conversation, Jean Marie. And if folks need to reach you, what is your email or what, what is your website address? So my, my website is Your Parenting Mentor, uh, and that's where most of my things are. I also have a podcast called The Art of Parenting, which is uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. And those are my two two main ones. So there's there's a contact on my website, Your Parenting Mentor, Um if you you know need to reach out, I I'm available for you know private mentorship, or I have also some digital courses. Um, and if you're in San Diego and are birthing, I'm a birth doula. So there, Jean Marie, what a pleasure to always connect with you, to learn with you, and just truly grateful that you were able to share some tools and make the parents realize or support them in knowing that they're on the right path and they're doing yes. a great job. Yes. Good enough. Yes. Yes. Well, th thank you, uh, Yogi, for all that you've done and, and this wonderful platform and lovely connecting with you. Yes. Until next time, where we have additional conversation on movement and more. Yes.